Kia ora, let's talk about tauka pūro or Māori musical instruments. The phrase tauka pūro is made of two words. The first word tauka means a treasure and you might have heard that in the northern dialects where it's called a taonga. That second word pūro is made of two parts. The pū is the source of the sound and the oro is the sound wave travelling through the air. So tauka pūro, Māori musical instruments. I have a lovely set here from our education collection that I want to show you today. Most of these tauka are quite young. The majority were made between one and two years ago. I do have one here that's between 50 and 70 years old, but that's still really young when you think about museum collections. I'm going to start by talking about the very simple flutes. These are made from one material that's been carved to create one instrument. And I'm going to show you all these different tauka and talk a bit about what they're made from and how they were used and also some of the stories associated with them. Okay, so our first two are called kōwōwō and we have one made of bone and one made of wood. You can see it's quite a simple design, just a tube hollow all the way through and it has some little holes called weni weni. These are used to change the pitch of the music. I find it quite hard to play you have to blow across the top or down the side to create a lovely, sweet, high-pitched tune. Now, there are some really lovely stories associated with Kuo and In particular, there are love stories. So there is a famous one from Te Arawa about two people who fell in love. So Tutanikai played the Kuo so well that Hinemoa fell in love with him. But it's also associated with laments, that's songs of sadness. So there is a place name in the North Island. It is the longest place name in the world. It has 85 characters and it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It refers to the Kuo in terms of a song of sadness or a lament. That place name is called Taumata Whakatangihanga, Kuo o Tamatea, Turipuka, Kapiki Maunga, Poronuku, Pōkai Whenua ki Tanatahu. Pretty long, isn't it? So those are our two Kuo. Now I'm looking at another quite simple flute design, very similar, tube shaped, carved from wood, but this one has a little upturned snout at the end. And it also has some wee weeny weeny here to change the pitch. So again, like the kuowo can be blown across the top or down inside to create a lovely high pitched whistling sound, but this one can be played in a really special way. This part here can be played with one nostril. So that earns it the name, the nose flute, or the nguru, or in the southern dialect, the kuru. Now a lot of these are quite small, probably only about this size. This is quite a large variety. And that's because being played with the nose, it means you don't need a lot of air to fill up a small instrument. So they're quite a lovely um, nose flute there, the kuru or the nguru. All right, so now we're going to move on to some composite instruments. These ones have more than one type of material combined together to make one instrument. So starting with this one here called the putorino. Now this one's named for the, the case moth, which is a kind of insect that makes a cocoon. The cocoon is narrow at the top, it gets wider, and then it tapers off to get narrower again, and that's what the shape is inspired by. You can see it has some different faces carved on it, and it also has some binding around it. So this one is made from rata, which is a hard wood, and um, the carvings are actually based on one that's on display in the Tangata Whenua Gallery. These would be made by splitting them down the side, and you carve these parts independently and hollow them out before joining them back together, and then using a little bit of maybe some sap or something to, to join them up, and then the binding would hold it all together as one. So this binding is made of cord, but in the old days it would have been split bind. Now there are quite a few different ways to play this, and so it's talked about as a flute that has many voices. So we could play it across the top here, we could play down like we would play the kuowo, but also it could be played across the middle here, creating a third voice. Quite a lovely instrument, that one. All right, another composite is called the putatara. And a significant part of this is the shell. This is a triton shell. 
Now, it's really quite rare to find these shells naturally in New Zealand. So to find them was a real gift, and that made them very special. This is a bit different from the other three we've looked at because it is a trumpet rather than a flute. And you can see that it has that wide opening at the end to create a big trumpet sound. So you would push your lips against this and basically blow a raspberry, make your lips vibrate to create a really big trumpety sound. Now that made it really useful for communicating across distances and signalling. So it would be used to send messages across from maybe guards back to a village or perhaps being used in warfare. So quite a lovely instrument again as well. Now just to mention too that this part here, the, the shell part, could actually be used without the mouthpiece and that's actually quite common to see that. Um, just a shell with a hole in the side and you could play it like that but the mouthpiece is also added, particularly here in New Zealand. All right, so we've had four woodwind instruments, instruments that we use our mouth or a part of our body to blow air into it. Now we have two instruments that are played in quite a different way. These are swung instruments, and they're quite a, um, you find these kind of instruments all around the world. So this one here is quite simple. This is a bone paddle, and it's attached to quite a long string. And this one's actually got a lovely manaya that's been carved on it. So these are called pūrerehua, but they also have a couple of other names, rangorango or huhu. And these all relate to the names of insects. So the pūrerehua is a butterfly, the rangorango is a blowfly, and the huhu is the huhu beetle. So the reason they're named after those insects is because when you swing them around in the air, they make a buzzing, whirring sound, a little bit like an insect flying around. So that's the pūrerehua. And then I have this one here, which is a bit more unusual because of this part that you can see here in the middle. So this is actually a kind of vegetable. And when I have kids come into the museum, I ask them what sort of vegetable they think it is. Usually they'll say it's a pear, or maybe an onion. Actually, it's neither of those things. It's really a type of vegetable that's similar to a pumpkin or a marrow. It's called a gourd or a hue. So large varieties of these were grown to create water bottles or food storage containers. But little ones like this weren't put to waste. They were also used to make these lovely little instruments called a poya fiofio, or sometimes just called a hue. So the name Poya Fio Fio gives us a little bit of a clue about how they're used and what they sound like. So the poi part is like the poi ball being swung around in the air. And then Fio Fio is the noise it makes, the whistling noise. So all over the gourd, it has little holes. They've made those holes to let the seeds out. But also when you swing it around, the air whistles past those little holes and makes a lovely whistling noise. So it's sometimes called the whistling gourd. Now I wanted to mention something else. Now in the Pacific, or in other parts of the Pacific where Māori came from, there's actually a lot of percussion. So you see a lot of drums. If you went to the Pacific Cultures Gallery here in Dunedin at Otago Museum, you'd see a lot of drums on display. Now for some reason when Polynesian people came to Aotearoa, they didn't start using drums as much. We don't see a lot of drums here in New Zealand. I'm not sure why that is, but we do see some examples of body percussion. So that's when you use your body to make a noise to go along with music rather than using an instrument like a drum. One of the main ways this is done is through the use of poi. So poi balls can be swung around to make patterns, but also if you're really good at it, you can use it to, to bash them or bump them against part of your body to make percussive sounds. So you might bump them against your arms or against your shoulders and that will make a noise that will go along with the music. Another way you see this done is through kapahaka, where people use takahi waiwai, which is where you stamp your feet along in time to the music. And that provides the whole kapa, the whole team, a kind of um, a metered beat to kind of sing along to as well. So we see some examples of body percussion in the Māori world as well. I hope you've enjoyed seeing our Tauka Puro today. Hakiti anō.